Today on The Nature Nurse, we're going to talk about backyard chicken keeping. We've got a lot of great information if this is something you're interested in, or perhaps maybe you already do it and you want some more tips. Stay tuned. So today we have another special guest, Nancy Maniscolco. We are going to talk about backyard chicken farming and chicken keeping. It's becoming more of a trend in, in urban life. But before we talk to Nancy here, which mm -hmm. we're very grateful to have you uh, this today. Of course, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> is um, just always check with your local ordinance to make sure that it is allowed where you are um, before you make the investment in time and everything. So call your town hall and ask about it first if you are indeed interested. So, absolutely. Um, first off, how did you, chickens, why chickens? How did you get involved in this? So, um, I think I was born to be a farmer. Uh, that's the first thing. Um, I was always interested in farm life and um, chickens are, as they're called, the gateway drug to farming. <laughs> So we started, that. yeah, we started small. Um, I promised my husband when he finally committed to um, allowing me to do this back here, I would only get four chickens. And as you can see, that that's uh, not happening. Oh, there's many more. Um, so anyway, it's, it's basically just something that it's a family activity that um, we enjoy. We love the eggs, obviously. Um, it's, it's something that... I find very relaxing and the chickens are very funny. Um, so it's almost like having a, a dog in a way. Um, and until you hang out with chickens and learn their personalities, people underestimate the personality of a chicken. They all have their own personality. It's very interesting. Well, it's, I think you're um, absolutely right on that point because mm -hmm. even in my experience with dolphins and whales, right. um, they each have their own personalities. Oh, yeah. um, I've worked with them in captivity unfortunately before I knew more about them and now in the wild and even in the wild their interactions are very unique. Exactly. So That's I'm exactly not, true. I'm not surprised to hear that it's the same with chickens. It's the same with chickens and it's it's sometimes breed specific so there's hundreds of different kinds of breeds of chickens. I have at least I would say 30 different breeds in my oh, wow. in my coop right now um, and a lot of their personalities, just like a dog, some, you know, you could say some, like a Labrador Retriever is very easygoing, where a German Shepherd is very protective, and it's the same thing with chickens. So a Leghorn, I have a Leghorn chicken, um, her name is Stella, and she <laughs> is crazy. Uh, she, you can't go near her, she'll fly. Um, and then the Australorps that I have, they're big black chickens um, that originated in Australia. Um, they're very friendly, they're very ch kid friendly, so my, my teenage daughter could go in there and pick her, my, the Australorps up and hold them. Um, so yeah, they're very diverse in their personalities. Mm -hmm. So you bring up a good point because I know the CDC <clears throat> recently, as of this airing, issued new guidelines um, in regards to chicken keeping because of an increase in salmonella. Mm -hmm. So we will... Um, discuss those in more detail on this video in a little bit, but give us some of the basics of what you do so, to protect against disease. Because when we talk about nature and engaging in different ways with nature, we always try to include the risks and um, precautionary measures to keep us safe. Right. So basically, um, how I keep myself safe and my family is that I only wear one one or two pairs of shoes into the coop and those shoes never end up anywhere near my house um, because you're obviously walking in and out chickens just poop wherever so you, there's not like a specific place that's safe for you to walk in um, the same goes with clothing so if I go in there and do a full cleaning I will take all of my clothing off and put it in a bag and then bring it to my washing machine it doesn't touch anything else in my house um, another thing about chicken keeping is you have to wash your hands. Um, it, it, if you touch the eggs, if you touch a chicken, if you're just cleaning, um, hand washing is key. Um, and also young children, I would say, like my kids are teenagers now, so they're, they have common sense and they won't 
touch something in the chicken coop and then put their hands in their mouth. Um, but young kids, I wouldn't trust them um, to do such a thing. So I would just keep young kids out of the chicken coop pretty much altogether unless you have an outdoor, you know, sink <laughs> with soap in it. <laughs> and a, and a, a kid that listens. And a kid that listens, exactly. Yeah. So do you actually wash the eggs? So um, if I keep my, my nesting boxes very clean and filled with fresh hay, which I try to do, um, the eggs will be laid and they're completely clean. So, and when they're laid, um, there's a special covering that the chicken excretes during that process called the bloom. And that bloom protects the egg from bacteria. So if you wash the eggs, you're washing the bloom off. Um, and Americans tend to do that. It's an American thing to do. We, it, especially in big scale um, chicken farming, they, they wash all their eggs. Um, but when you do that, you're actually exposing the inner egg to bacteria because it's because it's protected by nature that, uh, that does that. Now, if I'm lazy and don't ch clean the boxes often and change the hay out, um, they will sometimes poop in the boxes and then you'll see poop on the egg. And sometimes you could just brush it off with like sandpaper or like a washcloth. Um, it really depends on the extent of the dirtiness of the egg. But most of my eggs that I pull out are clean. Mm -hmm. But that's more about tending those boxes. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. And they're such beautiful colors. Yes. We'll, we'll, uh, yes, we'll show you the colors. Yes, too. they're very pretty. Because then that, that speaks of the diversity of my flock and the different breeds. So different breeds obviously lay different colored eggs. And that's why there's so many breeds in my coop because I grew obsessed with the eggs. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because um, back in the day, I remember Martha Stewart um, created some paint colors because she was oh, yeah. so inspired, inspired by them. Oh, by, totally. By the totally. eggs. Yes. Those beautiful paint colors. Yes, and they're beautiful colored eggs. Yes, yeah. we enjoy them. Yeah. yeah. Well, so um, tell us more about the investment. Like the money investment? Yeah. Okay, so. So, so the coop that we built is large. Uh, you obviously don't need a coop this large. Um, you know, just say you go to Home Depot and you're conservative about what you buy there. You, maybe you can build a coop for between two and five hundred dollars. Um, you have to buy very good um, hardware cloth. Hardware cloth is what you'll see on the, all, covering the run, um, and it's how we keep foxes and hawks out. Um, chicken wire doesn't work at all. Chicken wire is really decorative. Um, nobody who keeps chickens with predators ever uses chicken wire because they could just pop it open. Hmm. But hardware cloth, um, they can't. So, and that's what costs money, is the hardware cloth. Um, monthly, after the coop is built, because um, that's pretty much your biggest cost, every month I probably spend about, I would say, uh, 30 to $50 on chicken feed, because I also supplement with about a half an hour of free ranging twice a week. So they come out onto my property and they forage for bugs and things. Um, and we also give them all of the kitchen scraps from our refrigerator that we, we don't, we're either not gonna use or you know things like you know when you're peeling an apple or peeling something, they get everything. So we don't waste any food now, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how I supplement keeping the cost down of feeding them. And then if you wanna buy a chicken, so I just, um, I ordered 25 Bantam chicks this past spring and my kids and I raised them and they were about two dollars each just to give you an idea of how much chickens cost mm -hmm. to purchase but there are special breeds some breeds like broilers that people raise just for meat they're like a dollar each oh, yeah okay. so the the rarity of the breed is how you know it kind of defines the cost mm -hmm. yeah and so tell us about do you need a, a rooster no, so okay. you don't need a rooster. And in fact, where I live, it's, it's illegal to have a rooster without a permit. And there's all kinds of laws in New York, we're in New York State, um, but every state, and honestly, sometimes town to town have different ordinances about chickens. So I don't want a rooster because they're aggressive and you don't need roosters to have your hens lay eggs. The rooster is good for protecting the hens. So the, 
one problem I have is when I free range these hens, I have to stay out here with them. And honestly, I have to be holding a rake because our local red-tailed hawk has found out that the chickens are here. And she now lives across the street in a, in a nest that she built. Um, <laughs> wait, and she flies through every day. Um, wow. So she's waiting, so I have to defend the chickens. But the rooster would do that naturally. He'll take down a red-tailed hawk for really? sure. Oh, totally. Wow. Yep. Because I lived on a farm for a few years, and my um, cottage was right next to the paddocks and right yes. next to the barn yep. where the chickens and all the animals were. And um, I can tell you that the roosters genuinely, they do cock a doo to do yes, at, they do. at the sunrise. They crow. Yes, they do. <laughs> it's unfortunate, and I don't want to hear that either. Yeah, it, it is. It, as it, much as they're beautiful, up, yeah, but it's not. <laughs> I think that's probably what transformed me from being a later riser to now a very early riser. People are always like, you know, can you meet early? I'm like, I'm, I'm on farm hours now. Right, so, that's right. So yeah. am I. I wake up at five every day now. Yeah, yeah. 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 So <laughs> I'm sure your neighbors appreciate no, no, no roosters. roosters. They do. They do appreciate that. Yes. So are, are the eggs healthier for you than store-bought eggs? Is there any research or I have read that? articles. I haven't never tested my eggs scientifically, but there are like the Cornell um, extension. Uh -huh. They will test your eggs if you pay them to do that. I've never done that. Uh -huh. um, what I've read is that um, when a chicken eats a diverse diet, the eggs will be richer in different vitamins. Compared to official USDA nutrient data for commercial eggs, Eggs from hens raised on pasture may contain one-third less cholesterol, one-quarter less saturated fat, two-thirds more vitamin A, two times more omega-3 fatty acids, three times more vitamin E, and seven times more beta-carotene, according to a study done by Mother Earth News in 2007. So in terms of, like, if you go away, what, what I have a chicken then? sitter. Okay. Yes. And uh, her name is Hillary, and she actually loves my chickens just as much as I do. She, we don't travel often, but she's desperate for me to go away because uh, she loves to come here and hang out with them. They're very relaxing to watch. Um, I always encourage her to get her own chickens, but she doesn't want to. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> she has a full time job. Um, so that's how we handle it. So they need to be taken care of. Every, every day? day, every day they need to have their eggs collected or else they'll start to peck them. Oh, okay. um, and they do, you have to make sure that they have water at all times or else even if they go, if they go about 12 hours without water, they could potentially stop laying eggs for two weeks. Oh wow. Yes. Interesting. So water is very important for them and that has to be maintained. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to go and take an actual look at the uh, new CDC guidelines now <clears throat> and then we are going to take a nice little tour into the coop with Nancy so stay tuned. <laughs> Let's take a moment to pause and talk about salmonella. Salmonella is a bacteria that is one of the most common causes of food poisoning in the United States. Symptoms may include diarrhea, vomiting, fever, and or abdominal cramps. Sometimes people can become so sick from salmonella infection that they have to go to the hospital. Children younger than five years, adults over 65, and people with weakened immune systems, including pregnant women, are more likely to have a serious illness from salmonella. The Center for Disease Control has released the following steps to reduce your chances of getting salmonella. Always wash your hands with soap and water right after touching live poultry or anything in the area where they live in Rome. Adults should supervise hand washing by young children. Use hand sanitizer if soap and water are not readily available. Don't let live poultry inside the house, especially in areas where food or drink is prepared, served, or stored. Set aside a pair of shoes to wear while taking care of poultry and keep those shoes outside of the house. Do not let children younger than 5 years, adults older than 65, or people with weakened immune systems from conditions such as cancer treatment, HIV AIDS, or organ transplants handle or touch chicks, ducklings, or other live poultry. Don't eat or drink in the area where the birds live or roam. Don't kiss your birds or snuggle them and then touch your face and mouth. Stay outdoors when cleaning any equipment or materials used to raise or care for live poultry, such as cages or feed or water containers. 
And lastly, buy live poultry from hatcheries that participate in the U.S. Department of Agricultural National Poultry Improvement Plan. We will include all these tips at the bottom of this video or in the blog. So now we're going to go ahead and take a tour and get an inside look of Nancy's chicken coop. Stay tuned. Welcome to my coop. Come on in. Okay. So I'm just going to lock the door behind us because they know how to get out. So these are two of my oldest hens here. This is Rosie and this is Angelica. Um, she, the gray bird lays a green egg. Um, she's called an olive egger. Um, and they're all different, like I said, different breeds that provide different color eggs. Um, heading down there is the leghorn that we mentioned before. Her name is Stella. The black and one? The black one, yep. And she's the only chicken here that lays a white egg. So those leghorns are the chicken breed that provides eggs to like grocery stores, you know, because they, they produce every day. They'll lay an egg every day. Where this Angelica lays an egg once a month. Once so a once a month. So that's the difference with certain breeds is some are more productive than others. Um, so come on in. This is, we call this our chicken couch. Um, they're birds, so they like to perch on things. They like to be up high so they can see what's going on outside. They're nosy. Uh, <laughs> that's one of their characteristics for sure. Um, we have a lot of different perches and things going on in the coop mostly to keep them busy because when chickens are bored they hurt each other so they peck at each other they pull each other's feathers out um, they're basically mean um, in general and um, there's a very strict pecking order that um, they follow Rosie is the head of our pecking order um, and so she's the first to eat when I throw down any food um, and she's the first one to attack another chicken if they're stepping out of line. Um, and they, they have a very strict line of who's next in charge. If you sit around watching chickens all day like I do, you get to know who's in charge and who isn't. Um, it's kind of an easy thing to watch. So as this is basically the chicken run. It's where they hang out during the day. Um, and then we're going to go inside to where they roost at night. So all the chickens in the evening at dusk will naturally go in to roost uh, where you, when, where you um, put up roosting bars. And that's also where they'll lay their eggs. You'll also see my, I have very young bantam chicks that are just two months old now. Um, as we walk by, I'll introduce you to some of them. So there's a couple looking in the mirror over there. Yes. Do they like that? Yes, they like that. So, so, oh, and the one that's laying down, her name is Ginger. She's the lowest on the pecking order. So she'll be the one to get a beating most of the time. Um, but they do enjoy, you see the chicken right in front of that mirror. She's checking herself out. Um, they love to look at themselves. I also have mirrors for them in the the the, um, the coop itself where they sleep that is so fun the pile of rocks over there we should walk in a little bit so um it doesn't look great right now but there's a chicken doing what i'm going to describe so oh, okay. that is their dust bath and it has just rained quite a bit so the diatomaceous earth that i use i buy food grade diatomaceous earth it's a 50 pound bag for about 19 bucks and it's a very fine dust that the chickens naturally like to, um, you know, the, like all birds, they take a dust bath. And that prevents mites. It prevents all kinds of parasites. This way you don't have to spray your chickens or the vicinity with any kind of pesticides. So I try to stay away from any antibiotics, pesticides. Um, I, I want natural eggs that I want to eat and feed my kids. And that's one of the ways I do that. I also feed them a lot of oregano. I grow a ton of oregano every spring um, and then I'll dry some of it. I sprinkle it in their food. Oregano um, prevents worms from forming in chickens. That's another thing that happens when you keep chickens in nature and not in a cage like in a mass produced uh, chicken farm because they're exposed to worms, they're exposed to parasites and animals. So oregano is a natural way to fight that. 
Um, so those are two ways that I use nature to help keep my chickens healthy. Yeah. Switching out there. And they just naturally go in there by they themselves. They naturally go in there. If the, if the earth, if the diatomaceous earth was dry right now, there would be 10 chickens in there. Huh. Yeah. They really love it. And it's like an activity for them to do. So these are my babies. I love them dearly. Um, this chicken's going to try to fly at us. So let's let her out. Come on. She is a Easter egger. Um, she's crazy. And let me, I'm going to go in and try to get her to come out so she doesn't fly at you. Okay, go. <laughs> okay, so she'll lay a blue egg. Um, and I keep her for that reason because her personality is not good. <laughs> oh, Lord. So these are the babies. And there's all different breeds in here. Um, the, the black chick right there with the white and black plume, she is a Polish. Um, then I have that fluffy white one right there next to the waterer. That is called a silky, and she literally feels like a cotton ball. Um, she else? keep that look as an adult? It'll be bigger. She'll have more of it. Like, in fact, her head looks like a pom-pom. My favorite is this chicken right here that just sat down. She's black. So she's a black cochin frizzle so her feathers have a genetic mutation that make them curl so they curl out that's why she looks fluffy her name is sheila i love her um and oh that is a black cochin so that's the difference it's the same breed but that cochin doesn't have the frizzle genetic mutation um, they're very docile birds. Um, they're very good for young children because they also want you, if I go in here and sit down, the cochins will come and sit on my lap because they really like human interaction. The Polish don't do that. They fly just like that other bird did. Um, so like I said before, they all have their own special, um, see, she's coming towards me. She's gonna try to climb over here to get to where we are. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so come on in here. We have some girls trying to lay eggs. Um, now it's going to be dark in here. I don't know. Okay. Says. Will it work? Um, so I, this is the one thing that's kind of gross that I do. I hang, it's a fly catcher. You'll see there's not a lot of flies. There's more hay on it. But I do try to prevent flies because they also spread chicken diseases. Um, these are the nesting boxes where they come and lay eggs. Um, they like to lay eggs on each other's eggs. They're very competitive in that way. So usually I come in here midday and there's like 10 eggs in one nesting box. Hmm. Um, these two girls are trying to figure out where they're gonna lay their eggs. They're marins um, and they lay a chocolate brown egg, which I'll show you when we go outside because they laid, one of them laid one this morning, yeah. Um, up there is the loft. Sometimes they lay eggs up there. I can actually go up there right now and see, because we might, oh yeah. So there's at least, oh my goodness. So we have three eggs here. Mm. Yeah, they like to hide their eggs from me um, and make it as difficult as possible to collect them. <laughs> <laughs> they do that for fun. So <clears throat> these eggs are from an Australorp. See, that one's real dirty, so I'm gonna have to definitely clean that. This one is perfectly fine, mm -hmm. although it's been pecked, but um, that's okay. Like I, it, when I use this, I'll just crack it here and dump it in. Um, and that's basically the chickens. Let's pause here and talk about the tips from the Center for Disease Control on handling eggs from backyard poultry. Eggshells may become contaminated with salmonella through the laying process once the eggs are laid through poultry feed or bedding. To keep your family healthy, follow the tips below when collecting and handling eggs from a backyard flock. Always wash your hands with soap and water after handling eggs, chickens, or anything in their environment. Maintain a clean coop. Cleaning the coop, floor, nests, and perches on a regular basis will help to keep the eggs clean. Collect eggs often. Eggs that spend a significant amount of time in the nest can become dirty or break. Cracked eggs should be thrown away. Eggs with dirt and debris can be cleaned with a fine sandpaper, a brush, or cloth. Don't wash eggs because colder water can pull bacteria into the egg. 
Refrigerate eggs after collection. Cook eggs thoroughly. Raw and undercooked eggs contain salmonella bacteria that can make you sick. Know the local regulations around the sale of eggs. If you sell eggs, it is important to follow local licensing requirements. So that's today's episode of The Nature Nurse. We hope you've enjoyed this. And now if this is something that you either are already doing, maybe you picked up some more tips. If you have questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. Or if this is something you've been thinking about, we hope that we presented the true nature of this experience and this practice. And so you can make a conscious choice if this is something that you're up for doing. Because Nancy's gonna close with just some um, quick thoughts on the, the, upkeep, the upkeep of, of this. The um, the upkeep of this coop and what that entails. Um, like any hobby um, that one would take on, for, for instance, for me, chicken keeping, I did a lot of research. I read probably 50 books, honestly, the year before I started this to really become aware of how I can keep my chickens healthy and more importantly, how I could keep myself and my family healthy um, by good chicken keeping practices. So basically what that entails is every day I come out in the morning and I do a quick kind of clean up. I put gloves on, I have a bag with me and I kind of like you would in, in a cat um, litter box, I do it like a quick picking up of poop. I do it every day. I only do it for about say 10 minutes. Um, and I, I actually have a composter here that I built last year that I put all the poop in and I'm gonna mix it. I've been mixing it with leaves and grass clippings and you know some food from the house. And in two years, that will be really good earth that I could use for my flower beds. So I kind of, I'm using the poop in a, in a cycle kind of thing because it's, it's very useful in the garden. You just can't use it right out of the coop because there's too much acid. Anyway, once a month, I come out here and I go into the coop and I take all of the nesting material out of the coop and out of the nesting boxes. I scrub it all down with vinegar and water. Sometimes I squeeze lime, like a, a lemon, I'm sorry, lemon juice in there because um, it really has to stay natural. Um, chickens have a very delicate lung system, so you can't use any kind of bleach or product in that way to clean their environment. Um, and then I put all new bedding in there so they get a full new house every month. Um, out here um, in the spring, my husband and I will till the dirt. This dirt is dirt that's outside. Uh, we didn't bring this dirt in, but you'll see that there are pine shavings. There's all kinds of stuff that have been mixed in over the last three years of us having the chickens out here, but basically they turned into dirt. So we turn the dirt to kind of keep it fresh. And sometimes depending on um, what we're doing, we'll throw down pine shavings because they smell nice. Um, and I, I also clean the waterers, any kind of their food dispensers. I do that in that monthly clean as well. Um, obviously washing my hands and all the clothing that I'm wearing um, <coughs> after I take on a project like that. I love the day that I clean the chicken coop. I clear my calendar so that nothing's going on with my kids and I just spend the day out here. I enjoy it. Um, the chickens also enjoy having me around. Um, they're very interested in what I'm doing so it's a fun way to interact with them. Um, and that's basically that. <laughs>